Hi, in today's video I'm going to show you some of the main tools and materials that you can use to get started with visible mending. First up it's threads and there are so many to choose from which I know can be confusing but most of the mending cards that you can get like these will be sorted into different fibre contents so you can match your cotton thread to the cotton t-shirt you're mending for example. There are small bundles of wool so you don't need to buy a full ball of wool to repair a jumper, you can just buy a small amount and colour match if you want to. And then there is also embroidery floss. All of these different threads have their benefits and can be used in different ways. Even though it is important to try and match the fibre content of your thread to your clothing, don't let this put you off too much to start with. I often recommend embroidery floss because it's 100% cotton and because it's stranded it has six strands and you can split that into three or into four or two, whatever thickness you need. So that's quite a good place to start if you've never used any of these before. Next up is needles and again there are so many that you can choose from. I'm just going to show a few of my favourites here but you can get specific embroidery needles, sashiko needles, darning needles, everything. The main thing you want to make sure of when you're using your needles, if for example you've got some around, is to make sure that the eye of the needle can hold the thread that you want to use okay and then also that the needle isn't pulling on your fabric as you're sewing because you don't want to damage the fabric anymore. So these and the clover sashiko needles are my favourite sashiko needles to use. They're really strong and they've got all different lengths which is great depending on whether you're sewing straight or curved lines and yeah I definitely recommend them, I think they're really good quality. This is a wool darning needle so you can see it's really thick with a nice big eye and that full point blunt tip so that you don't snag any of the wool as you're mending. These are some more Sashiko needles that I've tried in the past. Again, nice strong needles to work with. And these are some of my favourite darning needles. So these are much finer than the other needles and they're really long which is great when you're darning. Next we have darning mushrooms and darning tools. So these come in all shapes and sizes depending on the mend that you're working on. This is my favourite one um, but I do have a few others. Some of them are more dog than others. This one's literally been chewed by a dog, not by mine. Um, this one is a ladder darner, so this handle here is a latch hook that you can use for mending tights. It's a really fine hook, that one. This one has actually got a really nice flat dome, which is good depending on what you're working on. And then this is a Bakelite darning mushroom, so this was used during the Second World War. It actually has a light in the dome there, but I've never, I've never seen it working unfortunately. But that's a really great one as well. Then of course we have the mending tools, so these are just personal favourites of mine. You've probably seen my other video on the Speedweave darner, I've got the Ebor darner there. And also the Tombar darning machine as well. So these are useful and beautiful objects, but they're definitely not an essential when you're getting started with mending. So don't worry if you can't get hold of them. I also sometimes like to use the disc from the speed weave as a darning mushroom. It's great because there's no handle attached and it's got a nice flat dome to work on as well. So if you don't have access to a darning mushroom and you're looking for an alternative that you've got at home, these are some of the objects that people at my workshops have told me they've used successfully. So first up we've got a soup ladle. Then we've got glass jar, so you could either use the curve of the glass jar or you could take the lid off and use that. And then food items, you could use a lemon or another fruit with a really tough skin that's not going to get damaged by you sewing. Or a potato. Again, nice smooth surface to work with. Next up we have shears and scissors. 
So I think a really good pair of shears is important for cutting fabrics and then having some smaller scissors on hand for cutting threads is really helpful too. And a good ruler and a tape measure is also really important. I like this one because it's extendable, it's just easy to carry around with me, but a tape measure is also great. Next up is fabric pens and markers. If you followed me on Instagram for a while, you'll know how much I love these Pilot Friction pens. They're my preferred tool, but I also use chalk pencils sometimes, and if I'm working with a dark fabric, then just an ordinary stick of chalk works great as well. It didn't feel right to do a video about mending tools without talking about these stitching templates because I made them. And again, they're definitely not an essential tool if you're just getting started, but I love them a lot and proud of them and I think they're a really great accessory for Sashiko style stitching especially and they're really great at making one part of the process a little easier. When you're first getting started it can feel a bit overwhelming but being able to transfer your chosen design really quickly with these makes a difference and just means you can get on with the stitching part which is the fun part. Last but not least is fabric scraps. So this is just a tiny selection of denim scraps. I've got some linen scraps, cotton, jersey, wool. It's great to have a whole variety of even tiny pieces that are great for reinforcing underneath fabric or to cover holes as and when you're mending. And that's it. They're all the tools that you can use to get started with visible mending. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you found it helpful. If you have any questions, let me know, and I'd love to know if you think I've missed anything. What are your favourite tools for mending?